Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be talking about Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. This book was so good. I updated you guys as I read it on my Goodreads. So if y'all don't follow me on Goodreads, go follow me there or request a friend and I will accept. It'll be linked in the description box. But I updated you guys as I read there and I wrote my initial thoughts and review on the book now i'm gonna do a rant on it because this is honestly one of my new favorite fantasy books i love this so much also i uploaded on my youtube channel my little video where i do like the aesthetic of this book it's a little youtube short y'all can watch that as well for those of you who have not read this book this book follows a girl named Alosa, Princess Alosa. She is the daughter of the Pirate King. And pretty much a Pirate King is a guy who rules the sea, pretty much. So pretty much how we have kings on land, that's how it is. But a Pirate King, so he just rules the sea and he's like more ruthless, I guess, than any other pirate. So he kind of self-proclaims the title but it's honestly true also the whole plot is her getting kidnapped by this ship called the nightfarer and her trying to steal a map from that ship which will give herself two-thirds of the map which will lead them to the isle of singing women and all you need to know because anything else will spoil it but it's really good and there is a slow burn romance subplot the main character is just such a baddie like I love her. Her energy, her vibe. If y'all ever watched Pippi Longstocking Sails the South Seas, if y'all ever watched that show and you loved it, pick up this book. This book is for you. That's all you really need to know about this book. Go into this book pretty blindly. There is lots of plot twists and stuff that'll make you love this book. My jaw was dropping left and right. Such a good book. Highly recommend it. So now I'm going to talk about this book from start to finish with spoilers. So let's get right into it. The book starts off quick pace and she gets kidnapped by the night fairer by page 11. So while she's in the midst of getting kidnapped, she pretty much tells them how she wants to bring her wardrobe with them. I just thought that was such a bad move. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find the exact quote for you guys. Okay, so Draxon, who is the captain of the night fairer. By the way, we get a whole little map on the night fair. By the way, I tabbed this book and annotated it and everything. And I literally have no yellow tabs left anymore. That's where yellow is supposed to be. So, Draxon says, state your terms, princess. And she said, the crew is to be unharmed and released. I will come aboard your ship without resisting. Also, if you will bring my accessories over. Your accessories? Yes, my wardrobe and personal belongings. She turns to Raiden. She wants her clothes. I'm a princess and I will be treated as such. I was like, I love her already. And so the slow burn romance is kind of between her and this guy named Raiden or Ridden. And page 16, he's like, you've got the face of an angel, but the tongue of a snake. Yeah, the tension between them on another level, honestly. For as long as the slow burn lasted, it didn't last too long. So it was like kind of a slow burn romance because it didn't last for like half the book or something. Obviously, they're trying to interrogate her. She is so smart. Um, first of all, she steals the key from Redden to herself. She steals the key to herself and she gives him a fake one and she steals it from him in front of his face and unlocks herself so that she could get her wardrobe then he's like give it back and she gives him a fake one so after he walks out the book says i feel the metal slide down and slip into my hand it's the key to myself and then on the next page she kind of explains that she says the trick was finding a way to lock myself in the cell before switching the key with another one I brought on board I guess that the key to my own ship's bridge would be about the same size Ridden couldn't have noticed the difference he's not as clever as he thinks and I'm far more clever than he realizes big mistake on his part I love her I can't even explain to you guys how much I love her 
Then we also find out on the next page that she hides weapons in her book bindings. So she will like hollow out the spines of her book and hide small daggers and poison and all of that type of stuff in her book spines. And I'm like, this is where we meet Theris. Okay, so Theris comes up to herself, shows her that his tattoo is a K. And her dad's name is Caligan. And then it says, Theris must be the man on the ship working for my father. Whole time, that's what I'm thinking that Theris is. And the actual amount with Theris would. I don't want to tell y'all yet. Whatever, she's upset that her father kind of didn't tell her that he would be putting another guy on the ship. You know, I can do what I need to do without anybody babysitting me. Page 37. 38 we get into some more slow burn moments so sis is out of her cell and she's walking around Britain finds her he's like what are you doing because he obviously thinks that he has the key to her cell there's no way she got out and he's not wearing a shirt he touches his side as if to grab a pocket then remembers he's not wearing a shirt a fact i haven't been able to forget it wouldn't be so bad if he didn't smell so good. Pirates are supposed to stink. A little bit down, it says, The night air is brisk, but riding is still warm from being wrapped in bed. Warm and solid and good smelling. <laughs> and then on page 38, the tension on that page, y'all, is where Ridden realizes that she switched the key. And then she says, I'm learning that I enjoy toying with him. On page 39, she kind of hints at the fact that she gets beat by her father. She's like, because I won't fail, I can only imagine what my father would do if I did. I was like, I put question marks over that because I was like, what is she talking about? And she asks what happened to Ridden's father. And Ridden said, I killed him. I was shocked, honey. It's too much going on. On page 56, she says, the sea watches over me. She protects her home. I was like, what does that mean? And we ended up finding out that she's half siren. The whole time they're trying to get to this Isle of Singing Women. And that's pretty much where sirens are. So she's trying to get to this Isle, but she is a siren. And I'm like, this is too much. So then we meet Kieran and Inwin. I love Kieran and Inwin so much. They are my favorite characters, honestly, especially Inwin. Inwin is almost like the comedic relief, but he's also a thief and he's actually more intelligent and he lets on to a lot of people. And he's also really superstitious. And then we learn about Kieran and Inwin says that Kieran is an ugly drug because it takes away the pain. He has no desire to live, yet no desire to die either. It's a tough spot to be in. That is actually one of my favorite quotes from this book. And also, at the end of that page, it says everyone has something dark in their past. I suppose it's our job to overcome it. And if we can't overcome it, then all we can do is make the most from it. Every time something happened with Ridden and Alosa. Anyway, so she stays on the boat. She's obviously searching the boat a lot, trying to find this map. She ends up finding out that the map is on the outside of the boat, not the inside of the boat. She goes on the outside of the boat gets help from a siren and finds the map and i don't like draxon i know that's Ridden's brother but she kills this guy named Sheik. i'm sorry that's not good. i shouldn't be hyping that up but if anybody needed to die it was him so and then her and Ridden get into this like sword fight and he lets her stab him so that he can take the sword from her and she says, it's a bold and stupid move. I like it. I'm like, is that how you flirt, girl? Like, a sword fight? <laughs> we get to page 103. He's helping her bandage up from the sword fight. And then he sees her scars that she has all over her arms and legs. What happened, he asks. I was born to a pirate king. And then that's when I started to notice that she was getting beat like i had first assumed okay then ridden searches her books and stuff and he starts to notice that she has the weapons and stuff in hidden in her books so ridden actually finds out it's like god believe man so then she ends up starting to stay in ridden's quarters because 
she just keeps escaping. The book is already hectic and just a lot of other drama and stuff happened. Ridden tells her the story. Oh. Ridden tells her the story on how he killed his father, who is the pirate Jexter. By that point, Draxton is like really trying to torture her. And she just tells him where the hideout is. But in reality, the hideout is this place where her and her father plan to meet up for her to give him the map. So she kind of thought this through. After that is when she gets the map, you guys. She just beats the life out of Draxon, but she doesn't kill him because Riven is like, please don't kill him. That's my brother and I do love him. So she doesn't. And I was like, I hate Draxon, y'all. Oh, guess what? She gets kidnapped by the third pirate king, which is this guy named Borden. They have her in a cage. Well, first of all, he says that I have good authority that you have been depleted by the power the sea gives you, so you cannot save yourself. And she says, and whose authority would that be? Mine, says a voice from behind me. It's Theris. The way my jaw dropped at that moment, I was like, she said, betraying my father, that'll be the last mistake you ever make. Since fortunately for me, I'm not betraying him. He doesn't need for me to say so to know I'm confused. I was never your father's man. Oh my God. I was like, the way I trusted him with no thoughts about it. Like, I obviously was like, I hope she don't ask for help from him because... I think he kind of seemed suspicious and I just don't like him not for any particular reason until now and then she says I turned to Theris you weren't on my ship to help me no I was sent to watch you and then who is my father's man aboard the night there that was poor Gaspar I'm afraid he slit his throat when Draxon took control of his ship so we pretty much learned that she killed her father's man on accident she didn't know that that was her father's man so now they started using her as an experiment to see how sirens act and what all their powers can do and we learn more about what her powers can do they also use ridden as leverage and ridden says you're all fools if you think the princess cares whether i live or die and then there's snorts you're wrong ridden drexy kidnapped her he beat her he humiliated her he tried to take her body she loathes him and yet he's alive Then she starts having these flashbacks while they're trying to torture her and rid him and force her to show them what her powers can do. She starts having flashbacks of when her father kind of did the same thing. I hate her father. On page 244, he's like, it's all right. Ignore them. Focus on getting yourself out of this. You're good at escaping, so do it. Okay, I didn't explain who Borden was. Warden is the third pirate that like, king and he has the last third of the map which when all of the maps are together they can get them to the Isle of Singing Women and he's trying to use her to figure out what they'll be up against when they get to the Isle of Singing Women so she kills Warden right and Ridden helps her escape so they finally get to the knife error Draxon sees them and he pulls his brother back up and her and she sings him back to life and guess what Draxon locks her up again she gets to the uh place where they're supposed to be meeting her father hello father do you have it he asks i was like girl your daughter just got kidnapped by three people and that's your first thing you ask her somebody kill this man anyway and then she says um she was kidnapped by warden he asked how did he know you were here and she said he had a spy on the ship he asks her what happened to Borden. She said that he was dead. She And then he, they talk about whether or not she searched his body for the third map. And she said she did, but there was nothing on it. And then she said, and then he asked her to describe Borden to him. She describes who she thought was Borden, who she killed. She He says that wasn't Borden. What do you mean? Borden is an unremarkable man. Average look, brown hair, casual clothes, like to blend in in a crowd. Although he does have a rather obvious habit likes to flip coins over his head my jaw dropped because once he said he likes to flip a coin over his head that was the one trait that she kept saying there it's had so how am i not noticing the snakes you guys like what's going on 
and then she explains how that Darius was there but he kept ensuring that the um attention was always away from him I loved how this book ended I don't know if I'm gonna read book two so I don't mind spoilers of book two let me know how that one goes if you have read it if you enjoyed it let me know y'all thoughts on book two as well I loved how this book ended first of all she gets El Enwin and Karen to join her crew I love that. I love both of them so much. Like, and she also kidnaps Draxon and Ridden so that they, so that specifically Draxon can get a taste of his own medicine with all the kidnapping he likes to do. And then this is when we get to a really, really cute part. I honestly may read book two just for this couple. But I said, who is that? No, Nirida. That's my first mate at the helm. Not her, the dark beauty in the shadows. That's Serenda. He doesn't look away. As far as I can tell, he hasn't blinked. It was her job on the ship. I smile. She's my assassin. I want her to be the one to supervise me. What? You said I was on probation and I would be supervised for a time. I wanted to be her. I was like, oh, Karen. I'm shifty. I've never heard Karen talk so clearly. His words are usually accompanied by the slur that comes with constant dr drunkenness. Did you hear the part where I said she's an assassin? Don't mess with her. She'll kill you before you have time to blink. Then it shouldn't be a problem. She can make sure I don't step out of line. But to be honest, I'm dying to see how this turns out. And then she tells Serenda to come over there. She says, I wave her over. Like a cat, she sinks out of the shadows rather than taking the company way. She leaps up the railing and lands without making a sound. Now my annotation, I was like, Inej Gaffa? Have we met again? Because if y'all don't know, Inej is a spy in that book. Moves quietly, dark skin, long hair, all of the qualities that this little girl has. That's what I was like. Is that you reincarnated? I don't know. Yeah, then she goes and checks on Ridden. She explains well how her father and her mother had her and how her father didn't die when they were on like ow and then the last sentence of the whole book is there's still one third of the map that needs finding and that was the whole book but you guys should totally go read the book if you haven't let me know your thoughts if you have read it i do read paragraphs i would love to hear if you enjoyed this book um why you didn't if you didn't yes this book obviously had some like imperfect moments it wasn't god tier like sis of crows is for me but it was fantastic another great fantasy i highly recommend it i loved it so much if you loved it let me know if you like this video make sure you like um i hope you guys have a great day night evening afternoon morning bye